Hey yo, football fans, it's another okay. great year. Yep. Fantasy football fiends, grab, grab your beer. Uh. Giving you the best draft tips for your picks. Starts and sits to the wave of wide fix. Woo. For my grabs galore, the stats that's hardcore. Triple F does it all, have y'all screaming more. So sit back, relax, let the experts prevail. JT Magnum, Siggy Guns never fail. What's up, Fantasy Football fans? My name is JT Magnum here along with Siggy Guns, and welcome to Fantasy Football Fiends Week 11, Start'em and Sit'em Show. And uh, oh, always, man. always real quick, we want to, you know, first let you know about the show. Um, at, at the bottom there is our ticker. That's our Week 11 ticker. It's all the rankings there are based on... You know how we feel they're going to do during this week of play. If you don't see your player there or, or a player there, it's because we don't feel they're going to be that good that week, or maybe we overlooked them, or you know things like that. If you see a player that's on a buy, we are sorry. I try very hard to check on it. I missed a couple of them last week, and I apologize. I do my best to try to make sure that ticker is up to date, but sometimes I miss a player here or two or here or there. Also, please read the description of the show. We do this show on Tuesday, as always. We record on Tuesdays, so we don't know who's playing or, you know, if, if a certain person might, you know, get injured during the week or if something happens where a player's out. We do update it in the description. So please check the, check the description always for updates on injuries and who to start in case, you know, a player is injured. Uh, also for many other things that we update. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, thank you. Basically, thank you for all the comments and support as always. Uh, you guys are doing, you guys are excellent. You guys are, I, I, we can't thank you enough for all the support you're giving us and we really, really appreciate it. So moving on, let's get right into the show. Um, injuries this week. Uh, Ronnie Hillman, uh, sprained foot. He's out still a couple, a couple, I think a couple more weeks, maybe more. They don't know. He's listed as day to day. Uh, Delaney Walker suffered a concussion for the Titans. He will not be playing this week. As far as I know, he's not playing this week from what I heard. Uh, Lamar Miller, still injured with a shoulder, uh, probably will not play this week against the Bills on Thursday night. Uh, Brandon Marshall had an ankle sprain. He looks like he's going to play, but as far, you know, he's, he's one of those tough guys that will always play, but monitor him because uh, he's one of those players that when he's hurt, they seem to go to him a little less. <laughs> and it makes it, it makes Alshon Jeffrey the top target. So those are players that I know of at the moment injured. I Like I said, keep an eye on the description. In case there's more, we will update them as we yeah. go along. And the, I think uh, I, I think Reggie Bush also, he, tweaked his, he retweaked his ankle. So uh, under that situation. Yeah, so Theo Riddick. Obviously, for them. Yep. Um, week nine buys Dallas, New York Jets, Jacksonville, and Baltimore this week. So make sure you know you put your right players in. Make sure you don't have none of those uh, none of those players from those teams in. And let's get right into the waiver wire pickups, Siggy. Who's your three waiver wire pickups this week? C.J. Anderson. Obviously, we're talking about Hillman. Uh, Jordan Matthews, who lighted up in um, Philadelphia, and Mark Sanchez, the guy who was throwing the <laughs> hand. I'll go to. I'm going to talk about Mark Sanchez. I, <laughs> as a Jets fan, former Jets fan, would proceed with caution with him. Yes, he had a good game. Granted, I still think that was more of a product of how bad Carolina was in terms of turnovers, sacks, field position, etc. It was easy. It was an easy game for anybody at that point, I, in my opinion. Now, Mark Sanchez does look like he likes the tempo of the of this, um, you know, offense. I would just proceed with caution, though. He looked comfortable. He looked like he was comfortable and just relaxed and looked like he was having fun. <laughs> I don't trust him. <laughs> you, you never know with him, you know. Uh, but, but yeah, he did look relaxed and comfortable. But my three waiver wire pickups also CJ Anderson, obviously, with him and being out and the way he ran, he ran hard. And uh, oh, yeah. Ryan Matthews. Now, this is a guy that's interesting because a lot of people, uh, I'm not even gonna, I'll talk about him in a second. And Preston Parker for the Giants, but let's talk about Ryan Matthews. He he was injured early in the year and he might still be on a lot of free I notice that he's probably available on a lot of free agent wires just because of Brandon Oliver the way he's playing and also that you know the the fact that he wasn't coming back to like basically next week. He's not going to play until next week, but he might be worth the pickup considering he's obviously going to play, but a lot of teams might have given, given up on him. A lot of people might have uh, dropped him. He might still be available in your leagues, and I think he's going to basically he, he's going to be the starter. He's going to eventually you know get those carries back, and he does catch a lot of balls out of the backfield. So 
he's worth a try and worth picking up, especially I think I think the week eleven game. I'm not sure who they play in week or not week eleven, but um, uh, week twelve game. He's probably most likely going to play, if not this week against the Raiders. But I don't think he's going to play this week. It's probably be next week. So, so Ryan Matthews is definitely worth a look. Mm-hmm. So let's get into the stardom portion of the show. Who's your three must-start quarterbacks of the week? Well, we kind of talked about it last week, but Ben Roethlisberger, I'll go ahead and give him a second chance. <laughs> <laughs> he did not do anything against the Jets, but he is playing against Tennessee, and it's Monday night. He usually shows up on the bright lights. So Ben Roethlisberger, Jay Cutler, another person that threw up a dud, but now he's back at home with all the scrutiny against Minnesota. And Colin Kaepernick against the Giants. Anybody playing the Giants right now is going to look like a star. So Colin Kaepernick should have a huge game. Yeah, I got some. I got some people on my list that, uh, this week as well that have been like just kind of disappointing. But then you know, it, it, and then they'll have like the one game that they did well. Um, Matthew Stafford going against the Cardinals. With Calvin Johnson back, Matthew Stafford is always a start because the guy just – Calvin Johnson demands so much attention that a lot of people are, are left open. And the way Golden Tate's playing, uh, you know, that team is going to be – you know, I think they're going to be flying high because they can't run the ball against the Cardinals. You know they're going to be passing it. So uh, Brian Hoyer against the Texans, uh, he's just been on fire. Texans have a hard time stopping the pass as well. And Andy Dalton, this is his make or break right now. I mean, he was absolutely, I don't think you can get any worse than the way he played against the uh, Browns, which I was, I was in shock. And he's right, going against shocking. the Saints. The Saints don't have Keenan, uh, Keenan Lewis right now. He's hurt. He's gone. Um, you know, they're going to have, you know, they had a little trouble stopping the pass for the 49ers in that game. So I look for Andy Dalton to finally, you know, in the dome, you know, against Drew Brees, pick up his game, throw, throw some balls to Sanu and AJ Green and Tate and hopefully, you know, have a good game this week. I, I know he's going to have a good game this week against the Saints. Uh, who's your three must start running backs of the week? You got Trey, Trey Mason, uh, Theo Riddick. We just talked about a little bit of him and Frank Gordon. I'm going to talk about Riddick. He didn't do anything, but he did get a touchdown. Now, it does look like Joy Bell will probably get the majority of the carries, but there's no doubt that Theo Reddick is more of a playmaker in that backfield. And if Reggie Bush is out, I see him getting the opportunities around the red zone. So that alone would make it worth, especially against a Cardinals team that is now deflated with the Carson Palmer injury. I just have a feeling that a guy like Riddick is going to be somebody that, you know, could score on this team. And that you're going to need somebody that could be shifty against the Arizona Cardinals defense because the defense is pretty good. Oh, definitely. Yeah, because they're <laughs> – I mean, they just literally stop the run every, like – I don't think anybody's been able to run on them this year. Uh, yeah, my, not really. The only, no. the only chance you really have is just to do some screen stuff and things like that nature. I mean, we saw yeah. with uh, – I think Trey Mason last week he had a pretty good game, you know, solid. I wouldn't necessarily say it was uh Yeah. Fantastic, but it was solid. Yeah. Uh my three are Frank Gore going against the Giants. The Giants gave up obviously three hundred and fifty seven yards rushing to the Seattle Seahawks. And the Niners <laughs> are finally rediscovering the fact that they need to start running the ball. Um, they're getting back to their roots of what they are, what they know and you know what they know how to do. Uh, Mark Ingram, who had a great game against the 49ers, uh, going against the Bengals, who have been atrocious against the run this year. So look for Mark Ingram to keep on going. I mean, the Saints are minus a few running backs. They're leaning on him, and he's he's delivering. And of course, C.J. Yeah. Anderson going against the Rams. Rams have a tough Rams have a tough D, but I don't think they're that great against the run. And the Bron- the Broncos, the way they're playing now with that play action and everything, and being able to you know run those draws, C.J. Anderson's going to have another great game. Who's your uh, three wide receiver starts? Three wide receivers. I got Roddy White, Mike Evans, and Golden Tate. And we'll, I'm going to talk about Golden Tate. Um, you touched on it a little bit. Now that Calvin Johnson's back. You're going to see, you know, more people demand, you know, the corners are going to go ahead and go to him. I mean, obviously, this is a guy that, you know, commands attention, like you said. And I, I think the, the with Stafford being full strength in the offense, you're going to see now Golden Tate be able to do a lot more things, whether it's in the slot, whether it's, you know, on the outside, et cetera. I just think against the, like I said, the Cardinals defense, tough defense, you got to be creative. And Tate is a guy that can be creative. Yeah, my three wide receivers are Kevin Kelvin Benjamin going against the Falcons, Martavis Bryant against the Titans, and Malcolm Floyd against the Raiders. And we'll talk about Malcolm Floyd. That's a deep threat right there. And the, the Raiders, 
Raiders pass defense is horrible. They they can't cover anybody. And yeah. with a deep threat like Malcolm Floyd running loose, I mean, I think him and Keenan Allen are both going to have great games this week. But Malcolm Floyd's, you know, he's the guy that 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 Philip Rivers loves to throw deep to. And I just see him getting a couple deep bombs this week, maybe even a touchdown off a of fade route. So look for Malcolm Floyd to have a great game this week. Who's your uh, three tight ends? No, you just touch up on one of the teams right there about the Raiders, but uh, Antonio Gates. Um, I got Heath Miller and Charles Clay, and I'll go ahead and talk about Heath Miller. And um, like I said, Ben Roethlisberger, he's going to be wanting to go back to what was working and what was working whenever he was throwing his six TDs and having these monster games was throwing to Heath Miller. Heath Miller is kind of having a resurgence these last you know few weeks. Didn't do much last week against the Jets. But I think they're going to go ahead and go right back to him against a team. The Tennessee Titans is just looking real, real bad. And on Monday night, I just see big things coming out of that offense. So Heath Miller should definitely start. Yeah, my uh, my three tight ends are Austin. Austin, I hope I don't butcher his name. Safarian Jenkins going against the Redskins. Uh, Brandon Pettigrew against the Cardinals. And uh, Jordan Reed against the Bucks. And let's talk about Pettigrew, like we just talked about, Matthew Stafford, uh, with with Calvin Johnson demanding so much attention, and you know Patrick Peterson is going to be all over him, and you got you know you got the uh, the uh, other corner, uh, Cromartie, going against Brandon T- or uh, Golden Tate, and then you have uh, Matthew who's going to be matched up against Pettigrew. Problem is Matthew or Watcher. I always say his name, Tyrone Matthew. His he's going against uh, Pettigrew most likely. He's going to be trying to cover him, and he's got Pettigrew's got a, a serious height advantage. I know I know Matthew's athletic. I know he's a gifted uh, corner, but I don't think he can check Pettigrew. You know, coming off you know coming off that line, Pettigrew's just too big, and I think he's going to have his hands full this week, especially with you know with them trying to double uh, Calvin Johnson. So look for Pettigrew to get open and break loose a little bit. Yeah. Who's your uh, three starts for defense? Got the Denver Broncos, the San Diego Chargers, and the Pittsburgh Steelers. These are all pretty much no-brainers. I'll go ahead and talk about San Diego, though. Oakland Raiders, they're just not doing anything. that I, I thought for sure. In the first half, they kind of hung with the Broncos a little bit there. You had the two picks of Manning, but they, they just fell apart. It looks like they get tired pretty easy because the offense is just sputtering. And I just think San Diego in San Diego, they're a tough team already. And you're going to see a game where I can see San Diego either shutting them out completely or maybe, you know, Janikowski or uh, Sebastian would get a field goal here and there. But I don't see a lot of points coming out of Oakland, Oakland this week. Yeah, my three defenses are the Lions going against the Cardinals now that Drew Stanton is especially the quarterback. I know Drew Stanton's got that, you know, that cool deep ball and he's, you know, he's good for an occasional bomb here and there, but he's still, he's still not Carson Palmer. So I like the Lions and the Lions defense has been, oh, they've been awesome and they get after the quarterback and they too also can stop the run. Um, the Chiefs against the Seahawks actually this week because Seahawks are a different team away from home and being in Kansas City it's very tough to play there it's also very loud there as like it is in Seattle I think the Chiefs are going to have a good game special teams wise especially against the Seahawks uh and Redskins against the Bucks Bucks offense is just they're just I don't know what's wrong with them other than you know the the bright spot being Mike Evans but the Redskins defense is actually pretty solid and they play tough, and I like their corners. They're, they're young corners, but they got really good corners, and I like the way they play defense. So let's get into the sit portion of the show. Uh, who's your three quarterback sits of the week? Mark Sanchez, <laughs> Eli Manning, <laughs> and Brian Horrier. And I'll go ahead and talk about Mark Sanchez. Now, he had a good game, and I, I talked about my, uh, my, my uh, skepticism with him. He's going to Green Bay, and you saw what Green Bay just did to Jay Cutler. And Jay Cutler, I know he's had his problems also, but he is a, a slinger. He's somebody that, you know, usually even in blowouts would throw for monster yards, etc. But now that it's getting real cold up there and, and you know, the frozen tundra, etc., Green Bay's defense is looking real good. Clay Matthews is looking just awesome. And I, I just think that if you put a lot of pressure on Sanchez, I've seen it, you know, firsthand as a Jets fan. You put pressure on him, and he's just going to be making mistakes. I can see a pick six in this game. <laughs> yeah, they, I mean, they moved in the middle linebacker. He was playing middle linebacker and and flying around. I, I mean, they were moving him yeah. all over the place in that game. And, I, I mean, he was – that's just a gifted athlete, man. The, the guy is so good. And it, 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 
Yeah, I could see Mark Sanchez having a little bit of problems this week. But the way they move that offense, I don't know. I don't know. Might be a sleeper. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. I, I think it's going to be a good game. Don't get me wrong. Oh, yeah, I definitely. Think that, I, I think that it's going to be more of a – I don't think he's going to have it easy. I mean, let's let's face it. He's not going to have the field position he has in Green Bay whenever they their offense moves the ball. <laughs> Yeah, my my three sits are going to be Russell Wilson against the Chiefs, Eli Manning against the 49ers, and Alex Smith against the Seahawks. And I'll talk about Eli Manning. The 49ers defense, they're getting a boost. They're getting Alden Smith back this week. They lost Patrick Willis for the year, and but the linebackers that they put in so far have been have been uh, have been playing very well. And I just don't see Eli Manning being able to pa- – I mean, he's going to have to pass. The Niners are going to be up – they don't give up very many yards on the ground, but – He's going to have to pass, and he just makes mistakes. And the Niners have been picking off balls this year, and they picked off a couple from Drew Brees last week. So uh, Eli Manning is, is going to have his hands full, I think, this week against the number two uh, pass defense in the league. So who's who's your three uh, sit, sits for court, uh, running back this week? I got Fred Jackson, Steven Jackson, and LaShawn McCoy. And I'm going to talk about McCoy. I mean, it sounds like a broken record at this point. McCoy is just I, – I have no idea what's wrong with him. He's just not looking good. I, I don't know what it is. I don't know if he's just not not, in, not liking the fact that he has Darren Sproles to share the ball with. I don't know what it is, but he did get a touchdown at least last week or you know, this past Monday. And, I mean, that might be a bright spot. But against Green Bay's defense, you know, I just talked about how they just look so good. And, you know, in, in the cold, you have to run the ball. And if, he, if they're getting stuffed and if, and if Green Bay has a real good game offensively again, then they're going to have to be throwing like crazy. And I just see them using Sproles more. So once again, the Sean McCoy might be the guy that has to take a back seat to Sproles. Yeah, Sproles has been playing so well. I I actually had McCoy on my fantasy team, and I used him as trade bait while Sproles was hurt. Because I knew when Sproles That's came good. back that he was going to get the touches again. And I was just like, I'm not going to deal with him the rest of the year that way. So what I did was I used him as trade bait while Sproles was hurt. And immediately people jumped on it. And I actually made a nice, really nice, solid trade and got some good value from McCoy. So I don't know if anybody did that. I hope you did. I wish I would have said that on the show. But, but I mean, that's the, the best thing I can suggest is to try to use that, use him for some, you know, to get a couple good players for your playoff for your playoff weeks if you're going to make the like, playoffs. Yeah. Get rid of McCoy while you can. Because he because Sproles is just eating into his carries, and he looks like the better back at the point at this point. And, so. and, and, they, and they're scoring with them. I mean, yeah, I know McCoy just, you know, did get yeah. one, but Sproles took the first one away. You know what I mean? I mean yeah. It's just somebody that's just taking – I mean, it's frustrating because this was yeah. the top three pick. <laughs> yeah. So my my uh, three running backs are Trey Mason going against the Broncos, Joyke Bell against the Cardinals, and Andre Ellington against the Lions. And we'll touch upon Andre Ellington because he's been he's been a pretty solid back. I mean, he catches the ball. You know, he's one of those backs catches screen passes. They try to throw him. They try to throw passes on him with him. Uh, slants. They try to you know they try to run the ball. You know, with a lot of. Uh, you know, he doesn't really run too much up the middle, but he runs a lot of like pitches. And it seems like they use him for draws, but. The Lions defense up front is just really, really tough. They're also really great mm-hmm. against the run. And I don't and he's a little banged up. So I don't see him having a great game this week against that Lions defense. Who's your uh, three wide receiver sits? Larry Fitzgerald, Jeremy Macklin, and Reggie Wayne. And I'll go ahead and talk about Larry Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald was finally back because he had Carson Palmer. And I I, I <laughs> told y'all to start him whenever Palmer came back. And Fitzgerald was doing good. He looked like he had a good thing going. He did have some good yardage up until Carson Palmer got hurt this past week. And once Stan's going to come in, I'm, I'm telling you, he's just going to disappear again. And I, I, I hate to say that it's because there's no chemistry or they're just not on the same page. I don't know what it is, but Fitzgerald's already going to be tough playing against the Lions already. And I just think that now you're going to start, maybe you should start looking at trading him, in my opinion, because he's just, they're just not on the same page. Yeah, I got, I actually have big names on my list this week for sits. It's, uh, Brandon Marshall. Like we talked about, I talked about his ankle earlier against the Vikings, uh, Sammy Watkins against the Dolphins and Larry Fitzgerald as well against the Lions. And you touch up on Fitzgerald. I'll touch up on Watkins, Brent Grimes. I talked about him last week, how good he is, and he made his he made his case known with that nice interception against uh you know going in the end zone against uh Calvin Johnson, that one handed like grab. The guy is just phenomenal 
phenomenal at just shutting down receivers. I mean, he had a heart. He had his hands full with Calvin Johnson last week. But, I mean, everybody in the world is going to have their hands full with Calvin Johnson. So, but but Sammy Watkins is a rookie. He's going to be up all over him all game. And I don't really see Sammy Watkins having the greatest of games this week against that guy. That guy is just, he's just, he's a great corner. So yep. who's your uh, three si- tight end sits of the week? I got Larry Donnell, Kelsey up in Kansas City, and Jared Cook. And I'll go to talk about Cook. The Broncos defense, you know, is going to – they're solid. I wouldn't say they're great, but I just think they're solid. But the Rams offense now, it looks like the Austin Davis experience is starting to windle down. It, it looks like um, their offense is back to being the St. Louis <laughs> Rams that we knew before. <laughs> and they're not playing good at all. And at home, I would think that they'll usually do a little bit better. But I just think that the defense is just going to swarm him. And he hasn't been looking at Cook's way much. He did last week a lot. I think they're going to have to try to rely on him, but I think the Broncos are going to know that they're going to be looking at Cook because they lost all their good receivers already with Quick being injured and stuff like that. So they are uh, they have no weapons right now aside from Trey Mason, and I don't see the Rams doing anything offensively. Uh, yeah, me neither. And uh, my tight ends are Martellus Bennett going against the Vikings, Charles Clay against the Bills, and Dwayne Allen against the Patriots. And I'll talk about Martellus Bennett. He always disappears, it seems like, in the second half of the season. And he's had like the one, I think he had like one good game so far. And he just, it just seems like that offense is, isn't clicking. Jay Cutler's just not clicking with his receivers, not clicking with his, with the offense. They can't, they cannot protect them whatsoever. Like he has absolutely no offensive line help. Like they're, they're, they're just horrible. And, and you would think that Bennett would get more touches considering that he has no, you know, line help and, mm-hmm. you know, you know, he'd jump it off to him, but he's not getting open. He's, or, or who knows if he's not getting open or Cutler's just missing him, but he's just ha- not having a great game with the Vikings with Chad Greenway all over him. I don't see, I don't see Brett Bennett even really doing that much this week either. So, and the Vikings defense is actually pretty good this year. Yep. So who's your sit defenses? Carolina Panthers. Arizona Cardinals and the New Orleans Saints. I'm going to talk about the Saints. We talked about a little bit how Dalton just looked, you know, horrible. And I just think that this is going to be a statement game. I, I don't necessarily think the Bengals are going to come in there and beat New Orleans at home. I mean, they lost last week, New Orleans, that first time in, like, I think three years or something like that, or four years they lost at home. So I don't see that happening. But I do see Andy Dalton having a game that's going to be very, very good against the Saints defense. It hasn't really been good at all this year. And I think you have to be careful, you know, playing the New Orleans defense already. And I just think the Bengals have a lot more on the, you know, to prove in this game. So definitely sit the defense. Yeah, my my three defenses are uh, the Dolphins going against the Bills, uh, the Browns against the Texans, and actually the Chargers against the Raiders. And we'll talk about the we'll talk about the Chargers this week because the Raiders, for some reason, uh, they're getting blown out of games. But since they're getting blown out of the games, they're getting all these garbage points. So it seems like you want to start a defense against the Raiders, but Derek Carr isn't really making that many mistakes. And it's not that they're like fumbling, they're just playing bad on defense, but their offense is actually doing pretty well on some of the teams that they're playing. And being that it's a division rival, they always play the Chargers tough. And I just think that they're going to score some good points with the Chargers, but I don't think it's going to be anything where the Chargers get like, you know, interception returns for touchdowns. And another thing, Chargers are, are really thin at cornerback. They got a couple guys injured on that team at cornerback, and they don't, they're not defending the pass as well as, you know, they would like to. And, uh, the Raiders can take advantage of that this week. So let's get into the sleepers. Who's your three sleepers of the week? I got your boy, Stevie Johnson against the Giants, Michael Floyd, Arizona, and Kenny Britt. Now we're going to talk about Floyd. Like I said, Larry Fitzgerald is not the guy that he throws to, um, Stanton. It's Michael Floyd, and Michael Floyd has disappeared. And I just think that now that he does have the quarterback that likes to throw to him back, you know, it's kind of like Mark Sanchez throwing to Jordan Matthews over Jerry Macklin. We talked about how second-string quarterbacks, you know, like the, the, the second receiver or their third receiver because they're usually practiced with them and stuff like that. Yep. I just think Michael Floyd is going to have a big game. Against a team that the Lions defensively, like I said, they, they're going to stop the run. Stan's going to have to throw the ball. They're going to cover Fitzgerald, so that means Floyd should be the guy that benefits. Or Brown, but I think Floyd's going to have a good sleeping game. 
Yeah, I think the same. I mean, you, you see it all the time. These quarterbacks, they're, they're, they, they, uh, the chemistry between them and the third string, you know, the third wide receivers, are those are the, you know, or the second or third wide receivers. Those are the, you know, that chemistry, you know, comes off in the game. You know, you see it in the game. Yep. And that's what happened with Floyd earlier in the season with Stanton. And now, you know, he fell off. And then now, you know, Stanton's mm-hmm. back. So look for him to, you know, start getting the ball back. Um, my three sleepers are Teddy Bridgewater going against the Bears. The Bears are just atrocious on defense. They've been horrible. My goodness, they're horrible. I thought they were going to be much better this year. They have been absolutely horrible. It seems like ever since Peanut Tillman went down, their defense has just went whew, straight just to the bottom. <laughs> and you know, he was like, you know, he was like one of those guys that you know punched the ball, always get fumbles, always you know, very inspirational. And it just seemed like when yeah. he went down, they just lost it. So Teddy Bridgewater might actually have a great game this week against the Bears. Alfred Blue going against the Browns. The Browns have not stopped the run. Um, and you know, obviously, Arian Foster's day to day, he's he's injured as well. Alfred Blue subbing in for him. Look for him to get some yards against the Browns. And Carlos Hyde, we talked about the Giants giving up tons of rush yards last week to the Seahawks. And the Niners wanted to reestablish that identity of a running football team. That means you know, Carlos Hyde getting goal line carries. Carlos Hyde carrying the ball along with Frank Gore a lot. So look for him to actually have a good game along with Frank Gore against the Giants. So that does it for the week 11 edition of fantasy football fiends please leave your comments in the in the uh, comment section let us know if you have any questions if you have trade questions let us know about those if you have any uh you know lineup questions let us know about those we gladly you know do our best to help it seems like we do our best work in the comments last week sucked for us for our picks but i mean they, it was okay it, yeah it was pretty it was it was okay but it wasn't our greatest of weeks but it just seems like we kill it in the comment section a lot so you know feel free to ask us questions that's where we usually talk about the big boys especially in in the comment section we don't talk about you know like the peyton mannings and the andrew lux and the tom brady's and you know adrian peterson's who's coming back we don't we, and as you know des bryant we don't talk about these guys you know we talk about you know the lesser known people in our show but it's good to talk about them in the comment section so thanks a lot guys for you know trusting us and asking us questions and you know you know hopefully we're helping <laughs> so anything you want to add before we go Good luck, Week 11. The playoffs are right around the corner for fantasy. I think this is probably three weeks left. I think, including Week 11, and then the playoffs start. So this is the final push. You know, this is you pretty much need to win all three of these games if you're, you know, in the outside looking in. Yep. Yeah, it's hard to make that push, man. Sometimes, you know, that the playoffs. Oh, it's torture. So, good luck, best of luck, and uh, thanks for watching. Peace out, guys. Peace.